if there's any weird background sounds. Uh, my mom's working from home, my dad is dog sitting for my sister today, and my other sister is over visiting. So there's a lot happening in this house. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Victoria and today I am bringing you the wrap up of everything that I read in the month of April. April was a very good reading month for me. I read a lot of books and I liked most of everything that I read. I read 12 books in the past month, which is just really good for me. I had my uni mid-semester break, which is largely why I was so successful. I also did a 24-hour reading vlog, which I will link in the description down below as well as in the cards somewhere up here, where I read three books about war in 24 hours. That definitely helped me get through a lot of books in a very short period of time. But yeah, I read some five-star reads this month, so I'm excited to get into it. So let's, let's do that. The first book I read this month was was In Deeper Waters by F.T. Luckins or Lukens. I don't know how to pronounce that. I gave this book five out of five stars. I absolutely loved it. This is young adult historical fantasy. We follow Prince Tal who has kind of been sequestered in the castle since he was a small child when they realized he had magical powers because that's like a big bad no thing so they hid him from everybody in the kingdom but he's older now he's got his shit together so they're letting him go on his coming of age tour so he goes with his brother and like a whole crew they're on a boat and they come across this ship that has a prisoner in it and nobody else like the ship is burnt it's gonna sink and they find this boy locked up below decks how do i explain this tasked with watching over the prisoner tell is surprised to feel an intense connection with Athlin, that's the prisoner, and then is absolutely heartbroken and shocked when he dives overboard and presumably dies. But then just a few days later when they reach land, who should he come across in town but Athlin? That's suspicious. And uh, then he's kidnapped. Tal, not Athlin. And the people who have kidnapped him are trying to force him into revealing his powers so they can instigate a war. That is a really bad synopsis of this book. That is the synopsis they give you on the back of this book and I feel like it's just not very accurate but I don't want to say anything else because then I don't want to spoil it because obviously this book doesn't want you to know the other things that happen. I really liked this book. There's a lot of like a family, a deep dive into this family dynamic of this royal family which I really love. There's a found family kind of element with Athlin. It's queer which is everything. <laughs> I really love this book. I loved it. I love the writing. I love the characters. It's really short. I read it in like two settings. I would highly recommend checking this out. I really want to read more from this author. So the next book I finished this month was the one I was halfway through at the end of last month and that was You and Me on Vacation by Emily Henry. This is an adult romance book following these two people who have been best friends for many many years and every summer they go on a vacation together. Two summers ago something happened and they haven't really spoken since and this summer the girl character Poppy invites Alex, those are their names, Alex and Poppy, on another summer vacation and hopefully they can rekindle their friendship or maybe more. It's a romance book. We all know the more is coming. I only gave this a three stars. I did enjoy it. Overall, it was really fun. Uh, the tension towards the end felt very forced. Everybody's favorite trope of people not knowing how to have a legit conversation. It was like things got good like with their relationship and then for the sake of adding tension and adding another like 50 pages. I don't know. I didn't particularly enjoy that aspect of the book. I really liked the dual timelines. I mean it's not really dual timeline. It's like every other chapter is a snapshot from one of their vacations of the past and so it's kind of jumping around through their history revealing more about their relationship and the things that they've done together and what they've been through and I just I really liked that. I liked the slow reveal of it all. I thought it was really well done. I do love these characters. I vastly preferred Beach Read to this one but I did really like this. I feel like three stars makes it seem like I didn't and I did it just wasn't my favorite thing ever and I can see how other people may actually prefer it it's just not my favorite some of the tropey things it fell into towards the end next up I read Saga volume 4 by Brian K Vaughan and Fiona Staples this is the fourth volume shocking in the Saga graphic novel series I would show you some of the art in here but I don't see how I could do that without one spoiling the earlier three volumes or two showing you something graphically violent or graphically sexual this series is a very odd choice for a graphic novel so the series as a whole is kind of about the 
these two people who are from warring planets who have fallen in love and had a baby. That's kind of the enticing event of the whole series, the thing that kicks it all off. There's a whole lot more going on to it than that. There's these robot people who have like TVs for heads and they are super important. They have their own thing going on. That made it sound really stupid. They have TVs for heads. It's the vibes that we didn't know we needed. Oh, you know what I can show you? My new favorite character who I think we probably met last time, but look at him. <laughs> I love the art in these. This one felt more like a filler volume. I don't know, it just felt like a lot less happened compared to other volumes that I've read, but I did still enjoy it. We've definitely left off at a point of great intrigue where I don't know what's about to happen, so that's fun. I gave this four stars just because I love the art so much and I am like so in love with these characters in the story, so even though this one was probably my least favorite so far in the series, I did still have a really good time reading it. You fly through these. They're graphic novels and they're really small so it's like a one sitting one and done situation. The next book I read in April was If This Gets Out by Sophie Gonzalez and Kale Dietrich. Five out of five stars. This is a new favorite book for me. I love this so stupidly much. This is a contemporary, I think it's YA, following two boys who, are, well I mean it's following the whole band but specifically Ruben and Zach in a boy band a world famous boy band, they're super popular and they kind of fall in love but they're not allowed to tell anyone. Management won't let them. It's a whole thing. I really love this. I love the exploration of fame. I know a lot of people don't like fame in books but I do. The relationship in this is so cute. I just, oh, I love this. I cannot speak on the queer representation in here but I feel like it did a pretty good job of exploring the struggles and the different conflicting feelings people have when they enter into a queer relationship and they're not out. That's an interesting concept to kind of explore and I just I really 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 loved it. Oh my god please read it. Please read it. The next book I read was Titus Andronicus by William Shakespeare. So first off points to me we are going strong on my reading a classic each month. We've read two now. I was so excited to read this because I had vague memories of certain scenes of this from an old school performance someone else did that I watched. I gave this two stars purely because it is so disturbing. In the grand scheme of Shakespeare plays this one was actually probably the easiest read that I've had except for maybe like Romeo and Juliet because I'm so familiar with that story. This was very easy to follow which you know was all hitting in good directions but this book is one of the most twisted messed up things I think I've ever read. Rape, cannibalism, mutilation, murder but murder's kind of standard in Shakespeare plays. I was just kind of shocked things just kept getting worse. These are some of the most detestable characters I have read in a Shakespeare play and I have read Richard III. No and I know for a fact that Shakespeare wrote his plays for the masses to watch so I'm like okay this is entertaining it's messed up it's wrong the character who was raped and mutilated that only happens to her as you know reasons for her father to be doing things and I'm like that's like thanks Shakespeare I just oh my god this book <sighs> and then to top it all off there is a cannibalistic thing that happens in here that genuinely made me feel sick <laughs> I'm not gonna say what it is. The quote of what it is is on the back of this book, so I suppose I should have seen it coming. I don't know, I thought it was gonna be like a lot of Shakespeare things where it's just metaphorical, but no. No, it was literal. Everybody in this book is a bad person, except for the person who gets raped and mutilated. I understand Shakespeare is hugely influential into literature. I've read a whole bunch of Shakespeare plays. This one is just too disturbing for me. I could not rate it higher because it genuinely made me feel sick when I was reading it. And maybe that's the point and I should actually rate it higher for instigating those feelings for me but I do not associate those feelings with fun and I rate books based on how much I enjoy them. There is a little guide in the description of how I rate books if you're confused. My ratings don't always make sense. The next book I read in April was Oaths of Legacy by Emily Skrutsky. This is the second book in the Bloodbright trilogy sequel to Bonds of Brass. I gave this four out of five stars. It started off a bit slow but I did really enjoy it. We had a lot of character growth even though I feel like for a good chunk of this book I couldn't understand why Gal was making the choices and feeling the feelings 
than he was feeling. To a degree I could, but a lot of what he was doing felt very out of character. But you know, I got past it. I did very much enjoy it. And then the ending was really weird and I'm not really sure why it ended that way. I feel like we finally got to a point where I was like, oh, this could actually be quite interesting how they would build off this. And then it was like, actually, no, we're not really to do that. We're just gonna. The very end of it felt very, very, very rushed. Cause it just, it happened very fast. Everything else in this series has taken so long. It's been a relatively slow paced series in terms of the things that are happening. And then we just suddenly skipped a lot of build up to an event. Like the build up wasn't there and that felt weird. But I did enjoy it. I do plan on finishing the trilogy. The third book comes out, oh, in May actually, I think. So that's exciting. The next book I read is another five star favorite book. And it was kind of an unexpected five star. Once Upon a Dream by Liz Braswell. This is a part of the Disney Twisted Tales line. It's not really a series. I keep calling it a series, but they're not in any way connected other than the fact that they match and they're all a take on a different Disney movie. This one here is a retelling of Sleeping Beauty and it says, what if the Sleeping Beauty never woke up? Which is kind of a misleading tagline. I mean, it's correct, but there's more to it than that. When she pricked her finger and fell asleep, she got sucked into a dream world and when Prince Philip killed the dragon that was Maleficent and everybody is sucked into her dream world because Maleficent went into it. It's very interesting. The dream world is like separate from the real world. No one knows it's a dream world. It's very interesting. I really liked this book. I found the concept super fun. I liked the exploration of mental health that was in here. That kind of came out of nowhere but I enjoyed it. I love the characters. I love how they actually gave Sleeping Beauty an actual you know personality that was really appreciated i just i really liked this book my camera battery is flashing but i'm gonna try and power through this the next three books i'm not really going to talk about in detail because as i said before i did do a 24-hour reading vlog where i read these so my detailed thoughts are in that video if you want to check it out i'd recommend you do it's actually quite a good video so the first book i read was the telegram by philippa wary i gave this three out of five stars this is following a girl named beatrice who's 14 in new zealand during World War One, and she takes up a job at the telegram and post office delivering telegrams which is quite an emotionally taxing job at times because you have to deliver the news to people that their family and partners and whatever are dead in the war. But this also kind of takes place in the short period of time following the end of the war and there was an influenza. That was a little too close for comfort. I did really like this. I liked the characters. I just felt like one, the ending, there like wasn't one. It just stopped and then I would have liked a little bit more depth in different areas. But overall, very enjoyable read. Then I read Girl in the Blue Coat by Monica Hersey. I also gave this three stars. This follows a girl named Henneke in 1943 Amsterdam. She is kind of in the black market selling food and stuff, selling supplies to people because, you know, rations sucked. And if you had the money to buy stuff on the black market, you were. And she gets asked by one of her clients if she can help find a missing Jewish teenager that she was harboring. And it just sends off this whole mystery of what happened to this girl. Her boyfriend died on the Dutch front and she ends up getting help from his brother in this whole thing. And it was just a very interesting dynamic between the two of them. It was interesting. I liked this book. I think the mystery element really dragged it down, but I am excited to read more from Monica Hesse in the future. The next book I read for that video was The Tattooist of Auschwitz by Heather Morris. I gave this four out of five stars. This follows Lael and Gita, and they actually fall in love in this death camp and it's kind of their story and following, you know, the end of the war as well. This is based on a true story. The reason it's called The Tattooist of Auschwitz is because Lael has a job in the camp as the tattooist. He's responsible for tattooing the prison numbers on the incoming prisoners. I really enjoyed this. It was very heartbreaking. It was very eye-opening because, you know, this takes place in Auschwitz from the perspective of an adult. So they're aware of just how bad things actually are. It's just very point blank. No, this is what happened. It was shit. And it's just a little bit shocking. This book is one I feel like would be hard for a lot of people to read. It has a lot of difficult material in it, but I really liked it. I'm sorry if you're in a slightly different angle. Uh, yeah, the, the camera gave up on me so I guess I was talking too much. I only have two more books to show you. Halo by Alexandra Edonito. I gave this a three stars but that's kind of generous. It's more like a 2.5 but rounded up 
to three because I did have a good time when I was reading this like I enjoyed the experience but overall there were some real yikes moments in here. This book follows a group of three angels who have been sent to earth to try and save it from the influence of the bad side. So they're supposed to be spreading, you know, love and that whole idea of being good, that kind of thing. And the three angels that are sent down are Gabriel, Ivy, and Bethany. She is the youngest of the three and she's the most human and she ends up falling in love with this human guy named Xavier. It's a YA paranormal romance from 2010. It, I feel like that's all I need to say. It's riding the coattails of Twilight fame. It's one of those books. For the most part I enjoyed this. I found the humanization of the angels very fascinating and this author's take on the afterlife was interesting as well. There were some very outdated gender things in this book that I feel like at the time I wouldn't have even noticed because they were everywhere but now they're not so I noticed <laughs> like there's a lot of you do this that and the other thing because you're a man <laughs> there was just a lot of that a lot of gender conformity gendered ideas and expectations of what people want and what people like I get weird vibes from certain parts of this book I did enjoy it it's very long there's a lot of convenient things that that happen for these characters. Xavier simultaneously was frustrating and the perfect person. I think part of why he was so frustrating was because he was like the perfect guy. He didn't get upset about literally anything until the one thing he got upset about that just made me really really angry. <laughs> I don't regret reading it but it's not a favorite. So the final book I read this month was another five star read and that was Lake Law by Anna Marie Mecklemore. Oh I loved this. I wanted to put this in my TBR video but I was still waiting for my copy to arrive. This took so long to get to me but I read it. I loved it. Anna Marie Mecklemore writes surrealist magical realism fiction stuff. So this novel follows two non-binary characters, Bastion and Law, who have both seen the world under the lake. Where Bastion lives there is this lake and there's a lot of lore surrounding the lake. In more modern times it's kind of faded away, people don't talk about it, people don't think about it, people don't believe it anymore. But Bastion and Law have seen the world under the lake. Law ends up moving to this town and things are happening. The world under the lake is trying to come above the lake and it's a big problem. <laughs> I love the lake lore, ironically. I don't know how else to word it. I also really loved Bastion and Law's relationship and how that grew and developed. It felt so real. We need more books that explore more diverse gender identities. I'm pretty sure Anna Marie Mecklemore is non-binary so I think this is own voices but I'm not 100% sure. There's a lot of neurodivergency in this novel. One of the characters has ADHD, one of the characters has really bad dyslexia and so I think the exploration of those two things was handled really nicely. I have thoroughly enjoyed every single Anna Marie Mecklemore book that I've read. They have another book coming out this year and I only found out about it the other day and I'm really excited. I'm so happy that I've read this. Honestly if you've never read an Anna Marie Mecklemore, do it. <laughs> I've read four of their books now and loved every single one. So that's everything I read this month. There were so many good books. There were a couple flops but so many books that I gave five stars. I really enjoyed everything that I read. I'm excited to be able to put these books into my read shelves. Leave a comment down below if you've read any of these books and what you thought about them or if you're planning on reading any of these. I'd love to hear about it. Please click subscribe if you enjoyed this video. I post every week so there's more bookish content coming your way. Don't forget to like this video. It does help the channel and I hope to see you guys next time in a new video. Bye!